Hey everyone, this is Dan. There is a home construction boom happening, and I believe there are three companies that will perform very well in that environment. They are DR Horton, DHI stock symbol, Lenar stock symbol LEN, and LGI Homes stock symbol LGIH. Let me explain why. Most recently, there is a Wall Street Journal article published on April 15, 2021, saying that the housing market is near 4 million homes short of buyer demand. And Freddie Mac says the gap has widened significantly in the past two years as builders struggle to keep up. Why is it happening? That's because there's a pent up demand. Not that many people have been able to buy houses during the pandemic. There's not enough inventory in the market in the last year and also a lot of people are now moving out of the big cities into the suburb they don't want to live in the big apartment buildings anymore they want to live in one family houses and that's why the home builders are working hard to catch up with that demand i like to mention my price targets for the three companies for dr horton my target is 116 dollars a share for lenar my target is 117 and for LGI, it's $180 a share by the end of December 2021. And the current prices are DHI $91.93, LEN is $100.10, and LGIH is $163.66. There's a lot of room for all three stocks to move up. Let's look at how the three stocks have been moving in the last couple of years. This chart is a daily chart starting from January 2020. Now, if you look at DHI, it went up by an impressive 74.87% during this period. Lenar is about the same. And then LGIH went up an even more impressive 131%. During the same time period, the S&P index only went up by 27%. And the NASDAQ index, as represented by the ETF QQQ, went up only by about 56%. These three stocks definitely outperform the broad market. There's a catch, however. You might notice that during the dip, which is the pandemic dip that happened between February and March of 2020, the home builders dip a lot more than the S&P or NASDAQ. Let's zoom into this segment of the chart. This is the daily chart from January 2020 to October 2020. We can see here that the three home builders went down during the pandemic dip by as much as 55%, whereas S&P only went down by 32% and NASDAQ went down only by no more than 30%. That's why the home builder stocks are a lot more volatile than the S&P or the NASDAQ 100. That's why the three home builder stocks are much more risky than the broad market during a market crash. I believe there's a way to take advantage of the home builder stocks when they are going up and avoid getting burned when they are crashing. I will explain that later. In the meanwhile, if you like what you've seen so far, please remember to click the like, subscribe, and notification button below this video so you can be notified when I publish my next video and this is also for the sake of the YouTube algorithm. Thank you. Let's move on. Let's look at the revenues and net income of these companies. For DHI, ever since after the Great Recession, from the first quarter of 2014 to the last quarter of 2020, the quarterly revenues tripled and the net income has been growing steadily as well since 2014. For Lenar, during the same period 2014 to 2020, the quarterly income quadrupled. The net income has been going up steadily as well. For LGI, from 2014 to 2020, there's a nine time increase in quarterly revenues, which is extremely impressive. And the quarterly net income has been going up steadily as well. We'll look at the exact numbers corresponding to the quarterly net income increase later on. Let's look at the evaluation of these three companies. I start with the financial data for the top 10 home building companies. Look at the average PE ratio, 
and arrive at 13. And then I use Yahoo Finance to look up their earning growth for the last five years. For DHI, it's an impressive 24.82%. For 2020, it was an impressive 46.6% earnings growth. And for next five years, Yahoo projects the earning growth to be 17.9%, which is reasonable compared to their past history. And then I used the actual performance of 2020, applied a PE ratio of 13, which is about the same as the current PE ratio, and apply this earning growth of 17.9% a year, and I arrive at my share price of $116 a share. Actually, that's after I take a 10% discount of my calculated number, just to be conservative. And similarly, for LEN, Yahoo says their next five years of earning growth would be 10.7% a year, and I apply a P ratio of just 11, and I arrive at my target of $117 a share. For LGI, I apply the future earnings growth of 14.83% a year, a P ratio of 11, and arrive at my target of $214 a share. Let's look at what the analysts have been saying about these three companies. For DHI, Yahoo Business did pricing target of 96.47, which is lower than my target of 116. Lewis Nevalier gives it a strong buy. TipRanks.com gives it a strong buy, and the high target is 108, which is a little bit lower than my target. CN Money has a buy rating, and the high target is 113, which is almost the same as my target. For LEN, my target is 117. Yahoo Business has a target of 109.15, a little bit lower than my target. Louis Navalier gives us a strong buy. TipsRanks.com is a moderate buy, and the high target is 120, a little bit higher than my target. CN Money has a buy rating, and the high target is 120, again, a little bit higher than my target. With LGI, my target is 214. That's my calculated target. Louis Nevalier gives us a strong buy. TipRanks.com gives it a hold rating. And the high target is 150. It's quite a bit lower than my target. CN Money gives it a hold rating and also set the high target at 150, much lower than my calculation. I'm pretty sure my calculation is accurate if it's going to perform as well as I believe it would based on the performance from the last few years. But we cannot outrun the market by too much as long as the professional analysts are saying that a target is not quite 214 or not even 170 it's difficult for LGI to reach that level in a short time that's why tentatively I'm lowering my target to 180 I'm pretty sure in the next few months as LGI continue to demonstrate this performance the professional analysts will start to increase the target but for now let's just settle for 180 for my new target Let's look at the charts. This is the daily chart for DHI. As you can see, it's been going up nicely since January of this year. Although today, we see this big red candle and it closed at 91.93. Today, DHI was down 3.96% when the broad market also went down, although not by so much. S&P, for example, was down only 0.68%. We do have these overbought signals here from RSI, and that's why the price started to dip after that spectacular bullish run. We had a bullish buy signal here from DMI and a bullish buy signal here from MACD, and today we are nearly seeing a bearish sell signal from MACD. So what evolves in the next few days will be critical. Let's look at the hourly chart for DHI. As we can see, it's very bearish in the last couple of days. We have this overbought signal from RSI a couple of days ago, and sure enough, the price started to go down. Then, as of today, approaching market closing, we have this oversold signal from RSI, and that's when the price started to turn up in the last two hours of the trading day. We have this sell signal from DMI and the sell signal from MACD. The big question is whether tomorrow the price will continue to go up, even though I'm very committed to my long-term targets. But for the short term, we have to watch what the broad market is doing. And that's why I would not buy in until I can see the price making higher highs and higher lows in the next few days. When I do buy DHI, I will enter an update note below this video. So make sure to come back to this webpage 
and look for my update notes every once in a while. Let's look at the support and resistance levels. I see the historical resistance level at 96, and then of course the resistance level at the all-time high of 98. And then for support, I see a support level at 91, which is a 20-day simple moving average. And the next level down is 87, and the next level down is 84, which is the lower Bollinger Band on a daily chart. Let's look at Lenar, L-E-N. It's been going up nicely since January, similar to THI. We also have this big red candle today, just like DHI. LEN was down 3.52% when SMP was down only 0.68%. There's nothing specifically wrong with any of the three companies for them to have this big red candle. It's just that these stocks are more volatile when the market is going down, like what we saw during the pandemic crash. But I don't think they're crashing, or I don't think the market is crashing at this point. We see a buy signal here from DMI and a buy signal from MACD about two, three weeks ago. And uh, we see a sell signal here three, four days ago with MACD. Let's look at the hourly chart for Lenar. Again, we see this bearish trend in the last couple of days. We had this overbought signal from RSI about three days ago. And that's when the price started to dip. And then we have this oversold signal from RSI right before the price started to recover during the last couple of hours of today's trading session. We see a sell signal here from the DMI and a sell signal here from MACD. Again, the big question is whether the price will be able to make higher highs and higher lows in the next few days before we can buy in. Let's look at the support and resistance level. I see a historical resistance at 104 and then of course the resistance at the all-time height of 106. For support levels, I see the next support is at 96, which is a lower Bollinger Band on a daily chart. And then after that, 94 and then 87. Let's look at LGI. We also have a big red candle today for LGI. It was down 3.84% when S&P was down only 0.68%. We have an overbought signal here from RSI. That's why it dipped today. Notice that LGI seems to be more bullish than the other two stocks because even though it went down, it did not touch the Bollinger Band, mid band yet. The chart is certainly more bullish than the chart for LEN or DHI. Now, looking at the DMI indicator, we had a buy signal here about three or four weeks ago, and it's being staying the bullish territory. And we had a buy signal here from MACD up until about four days ago. And let's zoom into the hourly chart. It's a little bit bearish just today instead of the last two days like the other two stocks. Again, LGI seems to be more bullish recently than the other two stocks. We have an overbought signal here from RSI, and that's when the price started to dip and then hit the lower boundary for the RSI, signaling an oversold situation. That's when we see the price started to pick up. And then we have a sell signal from DMI and a sell signal here from MACD on the hourly chart. Again, the big question is whether the price will be able to make the higher highs and higher lows in the next few days before it can buy in. If it doesn't go up like that, then it might continue to go down. Then we have to wait for the bears to exhaust themselves and start turning back upward again before we buy in. Let's look at the support and the resistance levels. I see the next level of resistance at 166, and then of course the resistance will be at the all-time high of 171. For support levels, I see 157 and 155, which is the 20-day simple moving average, and 152. Definitely, we should wait for the price to make higher lows and higher highs before we buy in. Eventually, I believe the three stocks will reach the targets I mentioned in the beginning of this video, but we have to respect the technical trends in the market. Let's look at how we can prevent ourselves from getting burned when there's a next market crash. I try to look at different economic indicators to see which one would predict the crash of the housing stocks. First, I look at new one-family houses sold. That's from the database offered by the St. Louis Federal Reserve Bank. The 2007 market crash started around October 2007, that's when S&P and NASDAQ started to dip. However, DR Horton and most of the other housing stocks actually started to dip in July of 2005. 
And if you look at this chart for one family house is sold, it actually peaked out in July of 2006. That's why this chart is really lagging the home builder's chart by one year. Definitely, this chart is not a good leading indicator for what's going to happen with the home builder's stock. Then I looked at another indicator, the K. Schiller National Home Price Index. It peaked out in April of 2006. Again, there's a time lag of nine months. Even though a lot of people said this K. Schiller chart correctly predicted the 2007 market crash. Yes, indeed. It showed a dip almost one year before the broad market started to crash. But as far as predicting the dip of the home builder, that's still lagging by nine months. So that's not a good indicator for these home builder stock either. And then if you look at housing start, it peaked in January 2006. That's a little bit better, but there's still a time lag of six months. Now, then I look at new private housing units authorized by building permits. It peaked out in September of 2005, so the time lag is only two months. So far, that's the best indicator I've found to correctly predict, or in this case, to confirm that something is happening to the home builder's market. Still, it's lagging the stock price by two months. The number here is published by the Fed one month later, so the time lag will be actually three months. The good news about this chart is that as of March 2021, we see a pretty high point here. And that means the home builders market will continue to be bullish according to this chart. If I find any better leading indicator for the stock prices for these three home builders, I will again add it to my update notes or I'll publish the next video. So make sure you click the like, subscribe, and notification button below this video. That way you'll be notified when I publish the next video. The next update for this chart from the Fed will be May 16, 2021. I'll definitely enter update notes or publish a video shortly after that date. Again, if you're watching this video a few days after April 20th, please make sure to check the update section below this video in case I've entered any update notes. And if you like what you've seen so far, please click the like, subscribe, and notification button. Thank you very much. As usual, I will welcome your comments, questions, and suggestions. Here is a recent article from US News published on March 23rd saying that the February drop in the home sales is because of the frigid weather and the snowstorms covering most of the country. And sure enough, in March, we see a nice pickup in the housing activities. So overall, things are still looking bullish. I'd like to restate my targets for DHI, which is $116 a share, LEN $117, LGIH $180 to be reached by the end of 2021. At this point, I'd like to mention that I'm not a financial advisor. You should make your own decision when you buy or sell stocks. And you should probably consult with the financial advisors before you do so. I share my stocks trading strategies for educational purpose only. This about wraps up my video for now. I will chat with you again in the next few days. In the meanwhile, I'd like to wish you the very best.